Hey again guys. So, as promised, I said that I would, when I learned a bit more about the IBM, do a video, and although I am still a rank amateur, I have a better understanding of what's going on, so I thought I would do a at least a first video. I suspect there are going to be more. Uh, I thought I would start with what's enabled me to understand what the hell's going on, and that's this. This is the documentation that came with the machine, and they just, they don't make documentation like this anymore. I went from knowing nothing to having, I mean, you know, a 5% or 10% understanding of how it all works. And if there's something wrong, this should help. Uh, it's organized into, um, first, the main system manuals, which are these ones here. And then there are some additional ones. Um, installation and reference. So this is initial setup, how to install the OS, things like that. The OS on the System 34 is called the SSP. We have this extremely well-thumbed manual here, which is actually all of the system messages that SSP can spit out. So that allows you to decode what the hell it's thinking. RPG2 is the... Um, most used programming language for this uh, series of machines. Um, RPG, RPG2, and then RPG3, which came out in the System 38, I believe. Um, it's like a combination of a business programming language and reporting tool mixed in with some basic, um, not a database, but a, a flat file records management system. Uh, and it was very popular. Um, ECSP, you can install COBOL, Fortran, BASIC, Assembler, RPG2, uh, but everybody used RPG2 pretty much. We have my OCL cheat sheet. ECSP is the name of the operating system. OCL is the um, language that you use to talk to the ECSP. So how you structured the commands when you're speaking on the command line. I have a more detailed OCL manual here. I have manuals for the terminals. Unfortunately, I don't have a terminal. Uh, obviously, the people that used to own this machine had several. Uh, I don't have one. I have a chap in Ohio that hopefully I can get um, a set from uh, with luck. Printer reference manuals. No good to me. Didn't come with a printer. I have no need for one. We have the maps, maintenance analysis procedures, and they are both of these. And the map allows you to say, um, let's find the start of one, here we go. So in this, uh, diagnostics, cable two, is the resistance between 100 and 130 ohms? Yes, no. No. Is it between this? Yes, no. Is it between this? Do this. Test this. It is a step-by-step, -step, yes, no, um, method of solving damn near every single major system fault with the IBM System 34. And as you can see, there's a lot of them, and it covers the main processor, the three different kinds of floppy drives, the two different kinds of hard disks, uh, printers, terminals, cabling, power supply in particular, things like that. So this is the start. If there's something intermittent or something that the maps don't find, you move on to the theory books. This is the real god scene, though. This one um, is the maintenance book. And it starts with parts catalog. So you can see the detail that it goes into. And then it names all the parts. This is my little cheat sheet book here so I know what all the power supplies are, which I copied from this. And it just, you know, it goes through from there. So using this, I was able to learn what most of the objects were in the system. The maintenance manual is the real gold. Power systems, two different kinds of printers, the two different kinds of internal disks, the CE panel, which now I know the name of it, processing unit, operating panels, the three different floppy drives, 
uh, multi-line data communications. These are modems, same with the MICR. No, the MICR is the um, optical reader. Uh, installation instructions, error information, things like that. Give you a hint if I jump to this page here. No, I lied. That was where I'm at. Um, the detail is extraordinary, and it's uh, the English people out there will catch it probably more than the Americans. Um, it's like a Haynes manual for the System 34. These are oscilloscope readouts. So everything that I need to know. There's circuit diagrams of the power supplies, the control boards for the power supplies, what the uh, lids should read on error readback, things like that. It's here. So this is, um, <laughs> without it I'd know squat. It's provided most of the information that I know about the system right now. The theory books are extremely interesting. Um, and this is really why I'm saying you just don't get documentation like this anymore. Would you like to know what the boot cycle of the core processor is? Diagram. How about uh, the timing for the main processor, or for the secondary processor rather? Logic diagram of the primary processor. Instruction sets. To the very lowest level, these books explain what's going on, how to fix stuff, how it's laid out, what it should be, what to do if it isn't. This one is uh, my favorite, although I haven't actually breezed into it yet, and it contains all of the logic diagrams for the entire system. So if I have something that's not doing what I think it should be doing, I can use this to trace back and find out where it is. I mean, it is a circuit diagram in its raw sense, and they have, there we go, further forward to the front, net lists. So it's saying this wire from this board goes to this board um, and connects to this pin on this integrated circuit, start to finish. And there's a few of them, and it goes further back than that. I mean, it's all there. It's incredible. I have um, software installs, uh, PTS, program temporary fixes, bug fixes basically, with the original diskette shipped from IBM. Uh, these are bus and tag cables, I believe. I have spare boards. Uh, this is a... That's a disk drive controller. Uh, I think... I think I worked out that this is a workstation controller. This one I don't know about. These ones I don't know about. And I think that should lead us on to the actual machine itself if we wander over here. So, before I was pointing at it, I didn't really know what we were looking at. Now I've got a much better understanding, obviously. This is called the CE, the Customer Engineer Panel. So it allows you to obviously um, boot the system from here. You can single step through instructions. You can inspect memory locations. This has a um, this here the control logic for the power supply. If the system comes up and something in the power supply fails, this will catch what's going on. If there's an over voltage, under voltage, over temperature, under temperature. I suppose probably kind of under temperature. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, this will catch it, and then you can use the CE to read the uh, RAM in this and find out what it's found. So you can diagnose power problems, which I suspect I'm really going to need. The power supply for this machine comes in here. I'm taking a couple more panels off. It is 208 or 230 volt, which means I should just be able to plug her straight in. Uh, hopefully. In fact, I probably could plug it in right now because I think it's got the right match for the um, twist lock I have over there but I'm not going to do it. Comes into the fuse and breaker box. This is the main system breaker here. Uh, and then it gets distributed to the power supplies. So this is the main power supply here, the main transformer. So the AC comes out of the AC box into the transformer. These enormous caps here, and this one goes all the way deep, so it's nine caps in there. 
are the line filters. This is the 5 volt filter, this is the multi-line filter. So this does uh, plus 24 volts, plus uh, 8.5 volts, minus 24 volts, minus 4 volts, and plus 6 volts, something like that, something weird. Um, plus 4 volts. I, 24 volts I can understand for doing steeping motors in the drives and things like that, but plus and minus 4 volts seemed really weird to me. This is an additional power supply and filter for the extended RAM. Uh, this one is for the um, hard disk and the fluffy drive. This one here is for the control logic. And then we have the distribution board. So the power supplies comes in on this side and then goes to the rest of the system out here. The floppy drive, as I said, is the major casualty. Um, I learned a bit more about it. This is a remarkable little thing. I thought that what you did is you stuck your jukebox in there, I'll show you one in a bit, and it would, you know, go jukebox one, um, disc three or something like that, you know, and it would just be an easy way of reading lots of discs at one time, save you, you know, wandering up, slotting in your discs, things like that. But it's not that at all. It can have single floppies. That's what these little guides are here. You can stick single discs in it. But you can also put the jukebox carts, and the jukebox carts act like a single volume. So it's not 10 8-inch floppies in the cartridge. It's one volume. So it's 10 times however big the floppies are. And the logic in this takes care of all the rest, which I think is absolutely remarkable. Unfortunately, as I took the cover off here, which is this, I found there's an awful lot more in here. Now, thankfully, it's not actually in the read mechanism, which is back in here, so we might actually be okay. But, and um, if you're a bit squeamish, you might want to look away. This here that looks like a wire, and this is the back leg and the tail of a dead mouse. It's still in there. So this is going to be really, really fun to clean up. Uh, if I come away without Hunter virus, I'll be lucky. So for the hard disks, uh, these are the 62 PCs. I'm not actually sure what the capacity is yet. I haven't worked that out. It doesn't seem to be documented clearly. But um, it is the larger drive. It at least says that, whatever the hell that means. Uh, so I have my um, C and D drives here. You can see that there are six platters. The cover is smoked perspex and can be popped off. The drives are serviceable. Unlike um, <laughs> any hard disk within the last 15 years, you can fiddle these. Now obviously, um, this is expected to be a clean environment. You can see here there's a um, air filter. Uh, in fact, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see those veins on the top of the spindle. Um, there's a cover that's got veins on it that when it spins it sucks in air and cools everything down inside uh, which again is a foreign thing these days discs although they tend to be vented um, they're filtered there's definitely not expected to be pulling air in and out 